Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. Today's project is a super sweet shadow box uh, vignette for Mother's Day. So this will be um, a vinyl and cardstock project. Let's go ahead and talk about the supplies that you're gonna need. So first things first, you're gonna need some shadow boxes and you can usually find these on sale at Michael's with a coupon or anything and they come in a variety of sizes. The other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need cardstock. Now I've got five colors of cardstock here and these are actually from Hobby Lobby. It was a succulent package and I love these colors together. They really are pretty much my favorite color combination. And I love it because it is bold and vibrant, just like most moms that I know, but it's also very soft and muted and such a safe place to rest your eyes. So I definitely love this color combo for a sweet Mother's Day gift. And I will talk to you a little bit more about the cardstock because it's really important that you choose the right type of cardstock. And if you don't have that on hand, I have a quick fix for that. The other thing that I'm going to be using is the, I'm just going to use some white vinyl. Any brand will do, but this will be a design that gets mirrored and put on the underside of the glass of the shadow box. And then I just have a couple of tools. So we have a spatula to help remove the flowers from the cutting mat. We have a quilling tool and then um, the I'm just going to use the light grip mat for the paper cutting on the Cricut. I've got a uh, paper trimmer and of course hot glue. So let's talk about cardstock before we get into the project. I have here two little test flowers and you can see that one is completely orange or like a terracotta color and the other has like white ends right here. Do y'all see that? Okay, so let me tell you how this happened. Um, I was testing out making paper flowers because I had this project in mind. So this was my first uh, attempt. And what I noticed is that my cardstock is fine. My rose looks really good, but it has this white edging. Now, that might be a look that you go for in particular projects with particular colors. Uh, this was not what I was looking for. So what I did is I took my blending brush and some distressed ink and I brushed it over the ends and I was able to fill in those white little areas of the edge of my cardstock, okay, and make it fully colored. So this particular cardstock, if we look at it, Okay, um, what you want to make sure is that on the edges, when I look at this as a pack, it doesn't really look like there's any, um, like there's any, like the edges are perfectly fine. But when I cut it, I think I end up, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think I might have to do the same thing. But these, if you look on this side of your cardstock, when I looked at this packet, all of the edges were solid color. And so I may not need to do that on this particular project. But then sometimes if you look on the edge of your project, of your paper, you can see the white. And what that means is that it's a white core cardstock. So the color is just on the, on the face of the, both sides, but not all the way through. And then solid core cardstock, it is all the way through, including on the edges. So that is a good quick fix if you run into this issue. It's just get some, get some um, colored pencils or markers or even some uh, distressed inks if you have or stamp inks and just blend that all in there, just a really light hand, and it takes care of that for you. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside for right now. And I want to show you about the cutting of the cardstock. Um, cardstock is, you know, a commodity that 
I like to try and use every little square inch if possible. So the flowers that we're making today are going to be three different sizes. And let me see if I can show you. So I found online there is a rolled flowers size chart and then the shadow box paper flowers fill chart. Okay, so I've based all of my sizing today off of those. I will see if I can find that and link it in the description. I'm hoping that I can. But essentially what I decided on is I'm going to have a flower that is six inches wide. Then I'm going to have a flower that is five inches wide. And then I'm going to have a flower that is about two and a half inches wide. So one eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. Okay. I'm going to stick that in here and I'm going to go to the six inch mark, slice that up, move that out of the way. And then I'm going to turn it so that it's landscape again. And I'm going to put it at the six and a half mark, slice it. Okay. So this is going to be for my six inch wide flower. This is going to be extra and it's such a nice size. You can use it for all kinds of card projects. I'm going to keep all these scraps. And then this piece is five inches. So I'm going to cut it at five and a half. Okay. So we have a six by six and a half. We have a five by five and a half. And then I have this one left over and this will be the, the one I use for the two and a half inch flower. So I've used almost all of the cardstock and I do have a nice size scrap left over that I can use for the mother's day card or, you know, any other paper crafts. So I have like a little stack of those. That'll be super fun. So that is essentially what I have already done with these five colors as I went ahead and already cut them all down. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into design space and I'm going to show you the project itself. I am in design space. And when I first started this project, I just went here to discover and I clicked on this search box and I put in 3d flowers. And then you will see if you, well, you'll have images, but then you'll see projects. Okay. And when you click on view all, there are a ton of really gorgeous projects that you can choose from. If you scroll down far enough, you start to get individual files, which I think is really handy because you could literally just choose any type of particular flower that you were looking for. So these are super fun. And then some have actually done, here's what it looks like as the cut. Here's what it looks like assembled and they've got some sizing on there. So I really like the way some of these designers have, have done that. Plus you have some great project ideas. The other thing you could do is you could search up mom shadow box and then you'll get things like this. Let okay. me go over to my stuff and I'm going to click on here. I've already kind of started the project. So when the project opened, it just had one flower right here and it was six by five point five eight inches. Well, what I did is I duplicated it two times. And so I resized this one down to five inches wide. And then I resized it again at two and a half inches wide. You can do this on any of the cutting machines. I thought about doing it on the joy, but since I need so many flowers, I'm going to be using my maker three. If you don't have a maker three, just make sure you choose the cutting machine that you do have. When I click make, take us over to that screen. Okay. So it puts all three on a page, right? And this is great because 
it saves a lot of space. I can move these around a little bit. And so this is one set, but I actually need like 25 um, of, I need 25 flowers. Now that was if I was using the big one. Since I'm using two other sizes, I think that I'm actually going to come over here and I'm gonna do project copies and I'm just gonna do 20. If I have flowers left over, great. I'm going to use them for something else, but I'm going to go ahead and do 20 and hit apply. And then you'll see where the design space will change that out. Uh, it has two large flowers and then it's got two of the medium sized flowers. And if I just keep scrolling through, Okay, so it's got several mats and I just, I'm looking for where the small tiny flowers are is essentially what I want to see. All right, so here we go. Here's all these little tiny flowers. And so those are going to go on that one uh, smaller piece of paper. Okay, so then if, if I were to hit continue at this point, Okay, now that we're connected with our Maker 3, then I'm really just going, this is 65 pound cardstock. So I'm gonna choose light cardstock and I have my fine point blade loaded. I'm gonna use default pressure. And so the next thing is for us to get our mat ready for cutting. Now, because I have different colors and I have different sizes of paper, I really need to think about what I'm gonna put where. So I was thinking that I would go ahead and have one color scheme here at the top, one color scheme down here. So I'm actually gonna be cutting two colors at one time and I'll just work my way through those mats. Then when I get down to the smaller flowers, the pieces of paper that I have, I may need to cut them just, you know, just slightly so that they're within the grid lines where the spacing is gonna be for the flowers. But essentially, I can just move all of these around and I can put all of those colored pieces of paper. What I'm really hoping is that two of them will fit on one of those little pieces of paper. It'll be nice, I'll have five or four different colors of paper along my mat and I'll have that in two different rows. So this will work out great. Now we need to get our mat ready. So what I have on screen for you is a tiny version of my overhead and then the mat that I pulled up in the edit screen of the make. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the papers in place. So I'm gonna remove all of the, carry, the little protective sheet and set that aside. And then here's what I'm gonna be doing. I want to make sure that when you click on these, you can actually see where the grid lines are. And you can, in fact, zoom in if you need to see more of that. Okay, so it looks like how I have it positioned is I'm gonna have This one here, it's going to be six by about six and a half. And then I have this one over here. It looks like it goes down to five. So that'll be right. Five by five and a half. Okay. And all right. And then I'm going to add another, another color. Now, definitely you could do all the same color at once. I get, tend to get a little excited. So I like to see way more than like, I like to see several colors at once. And then we'll put another one here. All right. So these are both of my six, six inch wide flowers. And these are going to be, yep, I did put that in the bottom. And then these will be the five inch flowers here on the right hand side. So this is what it's gonna look like. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting these cut out off camera. And in the meantime, go and enjoy yourself a wonderful cup of coffee or whatever your favorite morning beverage is, and I will be back soon. This is what happens when you cut them out. So let me show you how they come off, and then I will continue cutting off screen. So basically, I'm going to do the same thing that I always do is I'm just going to bend my mat and pull off the excess, okay, and then that's how that comes up. Just, it's actually kind of fun, to be honest with you, and really, if you wanted to not bend your mat, you could. So that would be okay too. So it'll work either way, bending or not bending the mat. I find that bending it and pulling off the corner is definitely, but it is, it's so fun. If you have little kids, you could have them pull up the extra paper for you. And okay. So then to get the actual flowers off of the mat, you've got a couple choices. You can go ahead and bend your mat and use your little spatula here to just help you get that started. Now these are going to be rolled anyway, so you know, I'm not too worried about keeping the paper flat, like when, you know, making a card project or, or something to that effect. But you do want to be gentle because it is just paper and it can absolutely tear if you're not really careful with these. So there's one. So if you wanted to, you could use your spatula and you could go around in this fashion. Um, I find that this particular way is, it's okay. It's, I mean, the, they still want to stick to the mat. So I have to be really careful when I'm pulling these off. See how, so I kind of, when I take these flower parts off, I like to bend the mat back. I just wanted to show you that you have options depending on what your style preference are. Depending so. on the cut, the flower, sometimes I don't even need the spatula, but I do like to have it handy. So I just got the light grip mat recently, and I will tell you, y'all, it is such a difference in paper crafting. The standard grip mats are amazing. I have several, but this light grip mat for paper crafts is really, truly essential. I'm going to go ahead and finish off camera getting these cut and ready. We are all cut out. This is, these are all of the paper flowers. They have been cut out with the Cricut and I've pulled off, I've pulled off all the negative space. Um, so I've got the three sizes here. I wanted to show them to you and I wanted to show you something about the ink blending and then I wanted to show you how to use the quilling tool. So this is the six inch wide flower and when I make it and let it it's kind of spin out, you can see that it is, you know, it's about an inch and a quarter. Um, so there's this one and the more of these that you use, the less flower rolling you have to do. And then the smaller ones can be used to fill in little gaps here and there, which is kind of what my plan is. This is the five inch flower. And so you can see that there. And when I unroll the five inch flower and get it all assembled, it's about one inch. So this is one and a quarter. This is one, okay, and then we have the little baby ones. These are so cute, and this one here is, you know, roughly three quarters of an inch, and this is what its flower ring looks like. Um, 
Now imagine if you did the whole project in this size, it really would take you forever. These roll easier, but they are smaller, so it would take a lot longer and a lot more flowers. So the more uh, flowers you want to use, the smaller the size, the less flowers you want to use, the larger the size. I want to show you how the quilling tool works. So you want to have your flower oriented like this, like a C for cuteness, okay? And then you're going to grab this end. This will be the part at the very bottom that you will glue. So under here, they will get glued together. So what, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the paper into the slot right here. Okay. And then this is the part where you will need to pack your patients. So have a wonderful cup of coffee or your favorite beverage. Throw on some, uh, throw on some Gilmore Girls or Grey's Anatomy or, you know, maybe a movie, something that you know that you can watch for a while and roll your flowers. So what I'm doing is I'm very slowly rolling and I'm keeping the edge, the bottom edge lined up, okay? And I'm just taking my time. Now, a lot of times I will use my thumb to kind of roll it, you know, guide it along my fingers. And that helps with making it more round. So a few of these I've done, I've noticed that if I don't do that as much, then they seem to be a little more angular, but I like to have it as rounded as possible. So I can just use my thumb and apply that pressure. And we just go along. And the more of these that you do, the faster you actually get. The closer you get to the end, the, the more awkward it feels just a little bit. I mean, not really, but I guess it's me. Maybe me. Okay, so here's what I do when I get close to the end. It gets a little harder to keep everything lined up here and it also gets harder to keep it into a tighter roll with rounded petals so I just pull off the quilling tool and set it aside and then I just wrap the remaining few petals around and then when I get here to the end Okay, I fold back this one here, just like that. And then I also fold it forward because I want to be able to have a nice crease there. And this is where the hot glue is going to go. Then we will push it down onto the flower and get it all glued into place. But before we do that, I take it and I just, there we go. And I literally just let it kind of unfurl on itself like this. And it's kind of fun <laughs> to watch it. Oh, I bent a little petal. Oh, well, in nature, I guess they would be bent a little bit as well. So you can get it to spread out as much as you want. Now, each flower that you do will look a little different. This one looks a little different than this one but they're roughly the same size. Okay, so when you get it to the size that you want, you're gonna take it and flip it over. And then I like to just kind of hold down this. And sometimes if it comes apart too much, I will kind of tighten it back on itself like this. And that happens and it's okay. Basically, I want the bottom to be covered by that flap right there. All right. So I don't want it super tight, but at the same time, I don't want it to be 
like all over the place to where this flap would not be effective. Okay, let me grab my, my little glue gun here. Okay, so I'm gonna put, and I usually put a pretty big glob of glue and then I just fold it down here like that. Okay, and then like mine has come apart a little bit more than I really wanted to. You could just go around like that if you want to. This is definitely optional. And then I'm just gonna let that sit there for a minute. Okay, and just kind of, I'm gonna let that literally chill out over there. So I am now going to be tasked with rolling all of these flowers. And this does take a while, so I am definitely not going to do this on camera. I will do all of the flower rolling, and then I will come back on camera, and we can put the project together. Okay, everyone, I wanted to take a pause and wanted to show you a sneak peek of what it is looking like. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. So I'm just placing the flowers um, as I finish them on top of here just to get a feel for how many I actually need and when I can stop. And I really do like the fill-in effect of the three different sizes. And so I just think I'm going to continue to roll and make flowers and get this all filled in. And then we will um, cut the vinyl for the glass and get everything assembled. Okay, so now it is time to put everything together. This is the most exciting part of this project. And um, pardon my voice at the moment. I've actually been under the weather since the last time I worked on this video for a couple of days. And so my voice is really not up to par, but that is okay. So let's go ahead and wrap up this wonderful Mother's Day project and um, see how it turns out. The first thing I want to talk to you about is the frame. I have all of the flowers here pulled, ready to go. And I did already um, cut out and weed the design. And I've mirrored the design. So what will happen is that it will lay on top of the glass like this. And then on the other side, it will look right side up. And I'm just using a piece of white Cricut vinyl that I have on, on hand. So as you can see in the frame, there it is a deep inset and we'll be cleaning the glass with rubbing alcohol just to make sure that it is nice um, and fingerprint free on the inside. And then it comes with like a border the backer is here, and this was, will be the top. I'll just need to make sure that I put that on. And then this right here, and I'm actually using an 8x8 um, shadow box display case, and I got these from Michaels. They were on sale at the time. And so I think what I'm going to do is I am actually going to glue the flowers onto this page here. And that way, in the event that I need to change anything or it's not permanently adhered to the backer of the frame. Also, if in the event mom ever wants to change it out for some reason, she has the freedom to do so. And then this is the frame, the, I guess, I don't know what you want to call it. it. It sits in the frame like this. So it's kind of like a border. So what I'm going to be doing is using that. I'm just going to use that to sit around and um, kind of corral the flowers where I put them. Okay, I'm going to grab my glue gun. I've got extra glue sticks here and I got all of these flowers. Now another thing that I was thinking about is that here in the corners, it's kind of hard to get into the corners with a large flower. So I thought it would be helpful to just 
put tiny flowers in each of the corners. All right, so let me let me gather all of the flowers and put them a little closer to myself here. So my glue gun is almost ready. And while we're waiting for that to finish, I wanted to show you, this is a really, really, really nice um, metal die, a little wafer die that I got from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to be making a card using this stamp. And I am so excited about it. This will be a different video. I'm not going to put it in this one because it'll be too long. But I just wanted to show you that this is going to complement the shadow box just so well. I don't know that I could have planned this any more perfect and um, this will be a very exciting project. I'm looking forward to that. All I'm going to do is get some glue now. There we go. Get some glue down on these flowers and I'll just put that there in the corner and then I think after I do this piece this little part I'm probably just gonna do random random assortment just like you would find in nature and go ahead and get all of these in here all right and so remember, I've got the large flowers to put in here. I've got some medium-sized flowers, and I do still have some smaller flowers. So I'm just going to take all of these and do a random assortment. Okay, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that I have all of the large flowers counted for, or at least what I think are the large flowers. And so I'm just going to go ahead and start randomly putting these down, and then I will start filling in the medium and small flowers. And so in the meantime, I will put on some music and speed this up for you. So enjoy the, enjoy the design and a great cup of coffee. glued in. You can also see where I had to go in and get some more. Um, I had originally had them all laid out and thinking about it I probably should have left them all in and just picked them up one by one and glued them back down and then I probably wouldn't have needed additional flowers but that's okay. I think that this has turned out quite well so far. So I think what I want to do is just I'm going to take a look and decide which way. Um, now this little spot right here I'm actually hoping will be covered up by some vinyl. I'm not too totally worried about some of the extra space. I think once it's once it's done, I think it's going to be really, really good. But in the meantime, I kind of like this orientation, I think, the best. So I'm going to just rotate the backer so that the top is like that. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and then... I think what I'm going to do is 
grab the glass. We're going to get that clean. We're going to get the vinyl onto the glass. But I don't want to put glass on top of glass. So, and sorry about that little bitty light spot. That's kind of bright there. All right, so let me get some transfer tape and we're going to get this glass cleaned and get this onto the glass and then assemble the frame and the project will be finished. I think what I'm going to do is because it is such a large area, I am not going to pull all of the transfer tape off at one time. Um, I want to make sure that I have a little more control over everything that's going on. So I'm going to just marry that down a little bit. Then I will start pulling the transfer tape down a little bit at a time, just like this, nice and easy. And okay, pick that up. Mm -hmm. I don't want this to stick to my glass mat while I'm burnishing it down. So I'm going to put carrier sheet back on just for a second. And I'm going to burnish the front and the back before we transfer it to the glass. So I'm just going to take some rubbing alcohol. Just regular, plain old rubbing alcohol. And get that nice and clean. So I have to laugh. This um, little blue pad that I'm working on right now, I is actually a velvet, like a, like a velvet colored push pin push pin pad or a, like a bulletin board almost and I originally bought it I thought it was a mouse pad so I actually use it like a mouse pad and it's so helpful right now to have it here the hard part is I need to get the mother part lined up in the middle as much as possible. I'm thinking this okay. We're gonna put it down like this. I think that one frame is just a little too big. Here is the center of the glass, that particular spot right there. And so, now we need to bring this up a little bit. I'm gonna kind of see, before I burnish this down, I want to see if it looks pretty centered. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to call that good because I don't want to pull this up and not be able to get the vinyl up off the glass. So I'm going to just burnish this down, pull off the transfer tape. Uh, true confession right now, this is actually the very first shadow box that I have actually ever made.
So to be honest, TBH, as my students would say, um, I'm kind of learning on the fly. I, in a way, don't really know. Well, I mean, I know what I'm doing, but I don't really know what I'm doing because I haven't done it before. And so I am winging it as I go. Now, I just want to go around the edge here and very gently over this, try and get any fingerprints up. And now I'm going to put it back in the main, the main box and So, okay, now I do know that with the box put together, that that, this is centered on a grid, and that actually looks pretty darn centered. So the next thing I'm going to do is grab these flowers and... Hopefully not disturb the border. And quite frankly, I do not even know if this is the smart way to do it, but I am going to try doing this because I need to fit these flowers back in that border. And you know, there may be a smarter way to do this. So if you have suggestions, please feel free. Help me out and um, let me know what has worked for you so that in the future when I do this, um, I am a little bit more of a pro at it instead of just kind of winging it. But hey, that, you know, that's kind of, that's crafting. Crafting is figuring things out as you go. And I think All right, I think I got it. Hmm. Okay, and this is the top here. Okay, let's turn it over and see. All right. That looks pretty good. You know, I'm wondering if I, I have a couple of glue strings, and I think I should take those off. Thoughts? I think so. Oh. Hey, maybe we need to put it on there like that because that came off nicely. All right, so I just noticed a couple of glue strings and they will bother me. And I just don't want to have glue strings in the shadow box as much as possible. Okay, um, I think that that is really good. Okay, this is probably what I should have done the first time, is do it like this. And then set this. Okay, that, <laughs> that is how you do it. Now, just get all of these down. Goodness, I still have glue on my paper. That is the blessing and the curse of hot glue, is having it everywhere. But boy, you can't beat it. Okay. 
All right, this is the finished. I mean, yo, look at that. That is just. That is so. This is amazing. All right, so that is a shadow box with rolled flowers. Any color scheme would work. Of course, any design you put on the, the front would work. And I do suggest putting the vinyl underneath the glass just to help keep it protected. And so I am going to go ahead and sign off for today. But I will be back in a second video and we will be making those Mother Day cards. Okay? So if you found that this video was helpful, inspiring, or entertaining at all, go ahead, hit that like button, go ahead and subscribe so you know when we post the next video, and enjoy yourself an amazing cup of coffee, and until I see you again, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.